So uh, we're here tonight to protest against Nigel Farage, who's the former uh, leader of uh, UKIP, UK Independence Party. Um, he's come on a speaking tour of Australia and New Zealand, as have um, a number of far-right speakers already um, over the last 12 months, um, including people like Milo Yiannopoulos, Lauren Southern and so on. And so um, we're, you know, um, giving them the welcome they deserve, um, or that he deserves rather, um, by protesting tonight. Nigel Farage, of course, is a racist. Uh, he goes around trying to convince working class people who are discontented with their lot, that, and middle class people for that matter, but it's all to do with the whole queue of brown people coming into Britain. He is, he's the kind of person that said that he would never uh, live next door to a Romanian family. He's the kind of person that has been hostile to Muslims and to migrants of all stripes. Um, and so that's who we're protesting against today because I think that, um, you know, this is the kind of, th these sorts of attitudes we know exist in Australia. Um, and the presence of someone like Nigel Farage, um, you know, spouting his kind of uh, rhetoric, his racist anti-migrant rhetoric, um, further emboldens the far right here. People supported leaving uh, the EU in Britain for all sorts of reasons, you know, and I'm no fan of this unelected, technocratic, like, you know, neoliberal institution that is the European Union. I'm no fan of it at all. But Nigel's job was to emphasise the racist aspect of that. And instead of people voting against, you know, OK, the European Union is the institution of the rich and the ruling class all across Europe, instead of emphasising those reasons for leaving, Nigel was the one who took on the job of basically steering all of that sentiment in a racist direction. And we've got enough of that in this world. We don't need one more far-right Fruit Loop coming to these shores to, to spruik this sort of stuff. So that's why we're out here protesting. So this is a country that is just swimming in toxic, toxic uh, kind of racist uh, attitudes and so on. There is an audience for those ideas in this country. Um, the good thing that exists in, uh, I guess, the good thing about Australia is that there is not a, um, you know, a really, you know, some professional uh, far right party that exists at the moment. But I think that, um, yeah, these people can see an opportunity to make some cash out of a willing audience here. That's why they're coming. A little bit of a tie-in because a lot of the squatters that formed the Melbourne Club behind us here, actually were the sort of idiot sons of the, the lower aristocracy in Britain. Oh, I can't do much on the family farm. Oh, go off to the colonies, you know, steal and pillage some land, see if you can do any good there. And now, there seems to be the same sort of trade in bloody right-wing shitheads who, you know, like washed up has-beens, like Milo Yiannopoulos, like Anne Coulter, like Nigel Farage, um, you know, come out and they get treated as megastars. So we've had enough and that's why we're here protesting. I have absolutely no problem with that. These people are entitled to their opinion. What they're not entitled to do is start throwing rocks, start abusing the people that are coming in, simply because their opinions differ from theirs. Have you been in contact with Victoria Police? About yeah, this? we've been working with Victoria Police for a few months now. Um, we've done full reports. Obviously, you can see from the presence here, every exit's covered. Um, you know, everyone inside is going to be particularly safe in the event that violence breaks out. Are you expecting violence? I don't know what to expect. So far, I think, that, well, from the intelligence that we have, they're pretty harmless groups. They're just here to you know, spread their message the same way Nigel's going to spread his. So, you know, I don't, I don't think there will be violence. Are you expecting police to charge you for this event? I don't event? expect them to charge me at all. We've discussed no, uh, no fees whatsoever. And I would, I would actually think that it's an international disgrace on Australia that the police in Victoria would charge a member of the European Parliament for protection. Would, would we expect, if Scott Morrison went to the United Kingdom, that the police there would send him a bill? Seriously. Let's face facts. This man is a member of the European Parliament. He's one of 700 delegates. He's here to, t to talk. You cannot seriously expect... Our he should actually be protected by federal police, if you want to get serious about that. You know, so... No, I don't expect a bill. And uh, as I said before... I love free speech. That's it. I haven't heard that. I haven't heard that. Probably not.
coverage about this event, when we see mainstream media articles try and make him out as some respectable politician, someone who sits in the European Parliament despite claiming uh, to be against the EU, getting that uh, very handsome salary. We know what he's actually about. We know his links with the far right. We know that he wants to work with people like Steve Bannon uh, to further uh, an extreme right-wing agenda, uh, even in a country like Australia. So I think it's so important that we come out on the streets uh, to air that kind of opposition, actually, because we are not invited onto Sky News very often. We're not uh, invited to give column pieces in The Australian. Uh, so uh, I think we should get another chance started. Yeah, yeah, Stop! 
as well as local, um, just uh, people who are trying to get into the venue. Um, the police are obviously being quite heavy-handed and trying to get um, all of these racists that want to uh, listen to Nigel Farage. So we're all just trying to give them a piece of our mind that if you want to come and uh, listen to racists, that this is what you're going to uh, be confronted uh, with. <laughs> message of solidarity and support to Chelsea Manning. It is an absolute crying outrage that Chelsea Manning has been refused entry into this country. She is one of the 21st century's greatest heroes. She blew the whistle on the absolute imperialist, vile, disgusting regime of the United States in Afghanistan and Iraq. And we stand in solidarity with her. We have for years and we want to continue that solidarity tonight. So if people could gather in front of the police line, let's all gather over there and hold up our signs. We want to send this message to Chelsea tonight as she's speaking uh, from New Zealand. Okay. Yeah, she got it led into New Zealand. Okay. All right. Being orderly isn't necessarily what the left is used to doing, but let's give it a go. Okay, if everyone could kind of gather in. Let her in, Chelsea Manning. 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 
I think it was good. We got a couple of hundred people out uh, to oppose Nigel Farage, um, oppose the people who were coming in. Um, and the thing that we saw was that, um, as with all of these events, when uh, the far right comes uh, to town, um, it brings out the worst um, in Melbourne. So Andrew Nolsh, uh, the guy who... Um, uh, desecrated the memorial to Eurydice Dixon recently. He was a guest here. Um, a local fascist called Bluebeard. He was a guest here. Um, Neil Erickson was also here. So really, these sorts of events really bring out the worst um, in, in Melbourne. Uh, but it also brings out the best. There's some really good anti-fascist uh, mobilisation out here tonight, so that was important. <laughs>